Hi everyone, this is a tutorial on Vapor's Python engine, which is useful if your data set contains variables that you would like to modify, or if your data set doesn't contain variables that you would like to derive from the variables that it does contain. So for example, if your data set contains a u, v, and w variable for the three uh, vector components of wind, uh, u being, being your x-axis component of wind, uh, v being your y-axis, and w being your vertical z-axis of wind, you can use Vapor's Python engine to create a wind speed variable that is the computation of input variables, u, v, and w, and generate a derived output variable, which is wind speed. Vapor also comes bundled with some convenience functions that you can create more exotic variables, such as relative humidity, cloud top temperature, uh, and vorticity based on your input variables. So just because your data set might not have things like wind speed, um, don't worry, because Vapor can derive those using a customized Python script. So all that being said, let's dive right into it. I'll exit out of my presentation. And as you can see, I'm on Mac OS X. I've already installed Vapor. I'll go to the bottom and click on my V, the Vapor icon, to open the application. And as you can see, I'm in Vapor's base state. Everything is grayed out. I can't do anything because I haven't loaded data yet. So I'll go to my file menu, click on import, and I'm going to import for my first example net CDF data, that is CF compliant. This is our canonical uh, F5 tornado simulation. So I'm going to browse to my tornado data set called May Control and just pick one of the files, click on open, and now we can see here is the domain of my tornado simulation, the extents that are encapsulated by this white cube. And I'm going to start by clicking on new, and for demonstration purposes, um, I'm gonna create a new renderer and I'll go with a slice renderer. So I'll click on slice, click on okay, click on this checkbox to enable my slice, and there it is. I can go to my geometry tab and move it up and down and rotate it, but you get the idea. There is my first slice, and if I go to my variables tab, we can see I'm looking at my variable dbz, the simulated reflectivity that came in the file that I just loaded. But we're going to pretend that I need to look at wind speed for my first example, and I'm going to derive it using our Python engine. So to do that, I will click on my tools menu up here at the very top and click on Python variables. Once I do that, I have this dialog right here where I have to define several things, including my custom Python script. Before I do anything, though, I have to give my script a name. And to do that, I will click on New to define a new script. And I'll call this script Demo, D-E-M-O. And it's derived based off of the data set that I just loaded, 24 May Control. So now I have a script called demo that is now being saved to my current Vapor session. If you're somewhat experienced with Vapor, you'll know that you can open Vapor, make a thousand changes, and then save your session, which is going to save the state of all of the things that you've changed, kind of like saving a text file. Um, right now I'm saving my script called demo into my Vapor session. The next thing I need to do for my script is, defi is to define my input variables. And in this uh, column over here, my input variables column, you can see I have options of 2D, 3D, and there's another tab called summary. 2D lists all the two-dimensional variables in my data set. And in this data set, there are no 2D variables, so we'll just skip that. I can go to my 3D tab, and this is a list of the 3D variables that I can use and access to derive my output variable, which I'll be doing in a second. And lastly, my summary over here is just a uh, summarized list of the input variables I've selected. So uh, for this demo, I'm going to go to 3D, scroll down, and again, I'm going to be deriving uh, wind speed in this tor tornado. And for that, I will need my U, V, and W components of wind. So I have U interp in this data set. It's uh, not just called U, it's U interp. There is an interpolation going on. So I'll click on U interp, V interp and w interp being my x, y, and z components of wind. 
So those are my inputs, and if I go to my summary tab, you can see these are the uh, variables I will be using in my Python script. But before I edit my Python script, <clears throat> I have to define an output variable. So I will click on new once again. My variable name will be speed. The output grid um, will be by default on the same grid as my inputs, and uh, more on this when we get to my, our next example with a worth data set. But right now, there's only one option. I will click on it and click OK. So here's my output variable. And now in my script editor, for uh, deriving wind speed, the first thing I will need to do is import NumPy for the square root function. So from NumPy, import. I'll be lazy. I'll import everything. I guess maybe I could be, mm, uh, I don't know pedantically more efficient by just importing square root, but I'm typically lazy. I, I like to just import everything because the memory footprint isn't that bad. And um, if I import individual modules, it's I'm more prone to hitting a typo. So I've imported everything from NumPy. I will now define uh, my speed variable, my output variable. So I will type speed equals sqrt, which is the NumPy function that I've imported, and I will do the square root of the squares of my vectors. So that would be u interp times u interp plus v interp times v interp plus w interp times w interp. And unless I've made a typo, my test should pass. So I will click on my test button. and my test has passed. So I have no typos and speed is a valid variable now. After that, I will save it to save it to my session, script save to session. So now I can access this speed variable when I load my session into the future. Click on OK, click on close. And so now we're looking again at my slice rendering. I'll go to my variables tab and instead of dbz, I can see now at the bottom of my list I now have a speed variable to select from. I'll click on that. And you'll notice Vapor takes some time to think about this because it's accessing three variables instead of one. Before we were looking at dbz, but now we're looking at uinterp, vinterp, and winterp computed into a new variable. So these derived variables take a little bit longer. But now we can see here is our wind speed and we can go ahead and play with it just for fun. I can go up and down the y-axis and see if I can find our tornado. I think it is right there. And um, yeah, that's, that's the basics. That's probably a very simple example, or one of the most simple uh, examples for creating new variables in Vapor. But Vapor can do more than uh, just generate custom derived variables. Vapor also comes with a set of functions, uh, convenience functions that can derive things that aren't so easy to compute. So um, I'll get into that right now first by closing this session of Vapor. And uh, I'll open up this slide just to show you real quick. So these convenience functions uh, that are bundled with Vapor come from files called vaporutils.py and vaporworf.py, and both of these guys have uh, things that'll let you compute things like cloud top temperature, relative humidity, or even vorticity um, based on which one you import. You can find these files, uh, depending on your operating system, in the share Python directory under the path that you've installed from. So on Windows, that would be under C, program files, vapor, share Python, uh, on Linux or Ubuntu or CentOS, um, depending on where you install it, I usually install in my home directory, users, Scott, Vapor 3, 350 Linux, and then again, share Python. And then on OS X, you have the applications directory under Vapor app, contents, share, and Python. That's where you're gonna find these two Python scripts. If you wanna uh, open them up, see what they're doing, and modify them, that's where they are. There's also uh, comments and documentation in there, but personally, I prefer to look at the documentation for these two files in our, um, our documentation website. So over here, if I go to our 
head of the documentation, I can go into the using Vapor3 section, and there will be a section called creating new variables with Python. I can click on that. I can see a brief description of what the Python engine interface is. And then from there, there are two subsections, the Vaporworf module and the Vapor Utils module. And under these two sections, I can see all of the available convenience functions to compute things like relative humidity, cloud top temperature. You can uh, compute simulated reflectivity, all these things without having to write that data to disk. You can derive it from the other variables. So to demonstrate this, um, I'm going to be targeting, I think I'll be making a relative humidity variable from our WERF Hurricane Katrina data set. So to jump into that, I'll click on Vapor once again. And as always, I have to first load data. So I'll go to Import, and this time I'll click on WERF ARW. Navigate to my WERF directory, and any one of these guys should be suitable. Here's my Hurricane Katrina domain, and I'm just going to make a slicer real quick. Turn it on, and we are looking here at our pressure variable, and let's give it a little bit more color in our transfer function because it's kind of monochrome. Yeah, that's good enough for demo purposes. So um, yes, once again, we are looking at our pressure variable, and we are looking at a slice, a horizontal slice, straight through the middle of the domain. I'll go to my Tools menu, click on Python Variables once again, Create a new script, and I will also call this demo, referencing my WERFOUT dataset. And this time we do have 3D variables in our data, or 2D variables in our dataset uh, listed in the 2D tab. But for relative humidity, um, we don't need any 3D variables. Let's open up our documentation again. So relative humidity is defined here. It requires pressure. Uh, base pressure, temperature, and Q vapor, just three. So P, P, B, T, and Q vapor. And let me blow that up in case it's hard to see on the, uh, on the video. Again, P, P, B, T, and Q vapor. I will go back to vapor <laughs> and uh, select P, P, B, temperature, and Q vapor. Go to my summary tab and verify all my inputs are what I need, P, PV, Q vapor, and temperature. And I'll create a new output variable, and I'll call this RH. And the output grid will default to the unstaggered grid, but you can see down here I can choose um, any of the other grids that are in the data set, but the default one in this case is the correct one. So I'll click OK. And then I will finally uh, write my script. So here I will write from VaporWorf, which is the uh, module that I'm, again, uh, driving from VaporWorf. Import RH. I'll just import everything for simplicity. And then my new variable called lowercase RH will be equal to RH of P, PB, T, Q vapor. I believe that's the correct order, but I'll double check. P, P, B, T, and Q vapor. P, P, B, T, and Q vapor. And then do a sanity check to see if this computes. Test passed. Save it to my session, and then close. Now at this point, I should be able to now select under my variables tab of my slice, RH down here at the bottom. And there is my rendering of relative humidity. If I go to my geometry tab, let's see if we can rotate our slice by 90 degrees on X. And we're looking straight through here. This must be the core of the hurricane. I can, let's see, scan up and down my slice. But this is a, basically a rendering of my derived relative humidity variable uh, based on the four inputs that I chose. And the same basic procedure applies to all of the uh, variables listed under the Wharf Python or the, the Vapor Wharf module here, as well as the Vapor Utils module. Um, 
yeah, so that, that kind of covers deriving a custom variable like we did with uh, velocity, or uh, velocity magnitude, aka speed. It also covers how to use Vapor's uh, Wharf module and the Vapor Utils module for the convenience functions uh, that come bundled with Vapor uh, for these variables that are not so uh, easy to derive off the top of our heads. And it also, um, I also covered where to find these guys. So if I go back to my demonstration, it's all about share slash Python. Wherever you install Vapor, you can find these scripts under share slash Python. And here are the, uh, some of the example installation directories on each of our supported operating systems. So I will add timestamps to the bottom of this video for each of these topics we've covered as well as a link to our discussion forum. If you have any comments um, or questions, please contact us there. And I hope this was useful. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.